Hello everyone, you are listening to the Earful Tower podcast. My name is Oliver G. This is a show all about Paris and France. And if you're brand new, if you're listening for the first time, I gotta say you came for a pretty good episode. This is a good one. You're gonna hear me interviewing Amaury Bouor. Bouor? I don't know how my pronunciation is. You'll be the judge in a few minutes. He is the executive chef at the Alain Ducasse restaurant of the legendary hotel Le Maurice. And when I say uh, legendary hotel and uh, I talk up this restaurant, believe me, this is the real deal. This is two Michelin stars. In fact, I did a little bit of research. I looked up the menu and I'm going to read a bit from it in a second. In fact, I'll tell you a bit more about our guest in a second. Uh, But first, let me paint a picture. This uh, is the same hotel where I booked a room and we stayed and uh, that was detailed in the last episode. So you can go back and listen to that to get a little bit of taste of the, of the hotel that, that uh, I'm talking about. It's in central Paris on Rue de Rivoli, one of the most beautiful streets right next to the Tuileries. And, uh, well, when I stayed there, I asked uh, the, the staff, the sort of press team at the, of the hotel, if I could interview the head chef because I've always wanted to interview one of these top Paris chefs. And they said, uh, not only did they say yes, but they said, do you want to talk to him in the kitchen? So uh, you guys are going to join me in the kitchen very shortly. I want to say this before I forget, uh, knowing that this would be a kind of a special episode, I hired a photographer who followed us around for the interview. So uh, all the things that you're going to hear us describing as we're walking around tasting food in the kitchen, when we're sitting in the, at the chef's table, all these things we describe, they're stunning photos uh, thanks to Augusta Sagnelli who took the pictures. They'll be on the website and on my social media this week. Uh, now... Before we get into the episode, the food, the guest, all that, a little bit of background information and housekeeping, I got a bit of a surprise this week because uh, for a long time, obviously for a very long time, I've been telling people that the Eiffel Tower podcast has been around for three or four years. I, uh, I looked it up. It turns out that on, I think, December 6th, so in a couple of weeks... Uh, It will be exactly five years since I released the first episode of this podcast. Five years. And weirdly, it'll almost certainly coincide with the two millionth download of the show. Uh, These are just numbers. They might not mean anything to you. They mean a great deal to me as an independent podcaster. And I'm extremely thankful uh, to you guys for the two million downloads. Uh, And extremely grateful, I guess, to you guys as well. Uh, for for listening in and supporting the show and giving me sort of the the drive to persevere with it because five years I would never have guessed I would never have guessed we got this far we're going to celebrate those milestones accordingly in due course so keep an ear out for that if you have any questions burning questions funny questions funny stories things that you think should be read out on the big episode to mark these Get in contact, leave a comment, social media, Instagram, email, you'll figure out a way to do it if you really want to share it. I'd love to hear from you. The other big news is that uh, I think December 16th, I'll be hosting a Earful Tower soiree in, uh, for the first time ever in a city, in a country that's not Paris or France. It'll be the first international Eiffel Tower event I've been talking about on social media. I'll talk about it properly at the end of this episode. Uh, but that's enough about the Eiffel Tower. There might be some people listening who, who are here for the first time, who are here for Amoury, who are here for Le Maurice, the food. So let me paint a picture before I uh, take you down to the restaurant with me. Here's what happens if you uh, want to look at the menu of uh, this Alain Ducasse restaurant. Alain Ducasse is, of course, the famed chef uh, who the restaurant's named after. Uh, the executive chef I'm talking to, of course, is Amaury Bourreau. Uh, just a little bit of background here. In describing his protégé, Amaury, uh, Alain Ducasse himself said that he was a natural choice for the role, embodying, this is a quote, embodying a youthful outlook and fresh approach to essential cuisine with a passion for authentic flavors and the excellence of contemporary French gastronomy. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the menu that if you look at the menu, there are like maybe 20 dishes. And I think the idea is you get small portions of each of them. I'm just going to sort of read out a few to whet your appetite wherever you are in the world. Lightly cooked gilt head brim from noir mutier slash beetroot slash rose chip slash smoked yogurt. These are words I don't even know. Crispy blue lobster, turnip, quince and cardamom. Check this out. Boiled chicken from cul oiseau, cauliflower and black garlic. 
roasted venison, cuttlefish, sorrel. I don't even know what sorrel is. Caviar, crystal. Crystal with a K there. There's, of course, cheese and desserts too. If you're wondering what the cost of such a, such a menu would be, the uh, découverte menu, 280 euros. That's three half dishes. The collection menu, 340 euros. So there you go. Uh, you know you're going to be looked after with a menu like that. Let me paint the picture now for you. When I came back to the hotel a couple days after I stayed there, incidentally, the receptionist all remembered my name, which I thought was very impressive. We went in there and I met with this head of uh, press there and she said, you ready? Let's go. So me and Augusta, the photographer, following along, she leads us through. She takes us through like an unmarked door and then takes us down some stairs, takes us left and right through all these corridors. I I kind of suspected that maybe she was lost for a little bit uh, and then uh, took us into the kitchen. Uh, but it was really stunning, a very beautiful kitchen, very clean, uh, Really tastefully done. You're going to see what I mean when you see the pictures. But if you have trouble imagining anything that we talk about over the next half an hour, there's probably a picture of it. So be sure to check them out. But we're down there and I'm, I was struck by how young all the chefs were. It felt like, uh, if I'm in my mid-30s, guys, it felt like I was the oldest person in the room, which was kind of unusual. And we were waiting a little while, waiting for the chef to come. And suddenly out he walked fixing his his tall white hat, the famous kind of cook's hat that you can imagine, and he greeted us warmly. And then what happened? Yeah, they took us through like uh, right through the kitchen and sat us down at the chef's table. There are pictures of this too. This beautiful room, uh, which we talk about in a second, but this beautiful room uh, with this cool little magic window that opens up onto the kitchen so hopefully you guys can hear the cooking in the background if not it doesn't matter because about halfway through uh, we got up from the table quite suddenly it was planned but uh, about 15 minutes in and we went into the kitchen and started talking to the chefs trying food you'll be hearing from me again uh, in that middle bit but for now i want you to close your eyes imagine you're sitting at the chef's table in le maurice the alain ducasse restaurant with the executive chef amoury here he is here you go Enjoy this episode. Bonjour and hello to you, Amaury. How are you? Fine, and you? I'm very well. I need to, my first question is, how is my pronunciation of your name? Amaury Bourg is good. I, I did it okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you tell uh, foreigners to call you, like, Michael or something? <laughs> <laughs> or do, do people struggle with your name in general? Mm, no, normally Amaury is, is easy, but it's my name, Bourg. Is difficult, big, but for me, it's not a problem. It's yeah. a problem of my parents, not yeah. a problem. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so before we get into anything, before we get into anything, I want to say congratulations to you for being so young and doing such a uh, an exciting job. So uh, that must have been an amazing moment for you to get this job. Yes, yes. Uh, after this period, is is very nice for me to have this position in the hotel because uh, I think I don't have a lot of. Same position in France for this uh, restaurant and for this hotel. And I love my job. At 18, I started in uh, Monaco. And uh, after, I will come back in Paris. And uh, I started in Plaza Atene six, uh, six years. After, uh, after I changed... Uh, it's very interesting because uh, during the six years... I see three different chefs mm -hmm. with a three with a three vision different, three concept different, but uh, the same uh, Alain Ducasse at the end in mm -hmm. the restaurant is more interesting. And after I go in the sous chef uh, La Serre House is a very old uh, restaurant in Paris, but it's uh, before is an institution. What's it called? La Serre. La, La Serre. Serre. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. It's the same of uh, Taiwan. Uh, uh, La Tour d'Argent is uh, before is very very famous yeah. and, uh, and uh, I love this house and now after five years Jocelyn Erland go uh, to the Plaza Athenee and uh, Alain Ducasse proposed uh, me the, the place of the... It's pretty crazy like for, just to think when you're 18 you started working under Michel Ducasse that's yeah. very young yes but um, I think is for me my when I was young I want to work in the restaurant but uh, I think uh, if you start in the more the best and the more difficult 
after I can see all, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, when you are young, you can work uh, very hard, you have a lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. You are a bad guy, but you have a lot of energy, you know? Yeah. But, but like, so when you were 18, did you... Because I'm thinking when I was 18, I was just an idiot. I didn't know what I... I didn't even know what I wanted to study at university. But yeah. you were already thinking, yeah. food, I want to do food. No, yes, because um, in, my, uh, in my education, for if you want to have money... To, to work, you know, and uh, a lot of my weekend I pass in the um, uh, traiteur. I don't know. The yeah, like the catering, catering, catering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. catering. Uh, a butcher. I help a lot of uh, uh, work in the alimentation because uh, it's more easy to work in this. Uh, so basically, you had those jobs when you were younger, yeah, and then and you, it's okay. easy because uh, it's not complicated the work. Just if you work with your hand. Yeah. And uh, I love this this uh, this work because uh, it's concrete, yeah. you know. But I I want maybe build a house or but I want uh, work with my hand. Yeah, it's my objective. I see. Not not obligatory in the kitchen, but uh, I, when I was young, I want to work with my hand. Interesting, interesting. And did they could they tell? really quickly when you started working as a teenager mm. could could your colleagues did they go well this guy Amory he's very good or were you terrible from the beginning no 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 I think um, I'm very voluntary but it's, it's difficult be, because in this house uh, in the house of Alain Ducasse you are uh, rigueur <laughs> you, tr you work a lot uh, it's very pre precious uh, prestigious or? prestigious mm -hmm. yes um, it's very fine dining with a three Michelin star it's very a lot of pressure mm. but uh, I love this uh, ambience yeah. this, uh, I think you're being very humble because I think that you must have shown good promise for, f to accelerate so quickly in your career in all these wonderful restaurants I think I think uh, there's <laughs> but and if you have a dream uh, it's more important to work for this okay yeah. okay and then I want to talk about the food and I think we're going to go into the kitchen but first this room that we're sitting in right now uh, with this long glass top golden table and dark lights it's very beautiful uh, and maybe the listeners at home can hear the people, the, sh the chefs cooking one meter away from us. B but where are we? What is this? Is um, is a chef table here? Yeah, the chef table is uh, when Alain Ducasse uh, come in the restaurant for taste my plate. It's good be because before to to make the dish, um, the the chef Alain Ducasse check all, and after validation, is uh, on the menu of the restaurant. And uh, for the exclusive guest, or if I have, uh, is yeah, I don't communicate of this room. It's very uh, exclusivity of the for the guest or for the VIP. You know, uh, is this like where um, you know, like the celebrities in America come down to eat? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is okay. uh, for example, if you don't like if you want a tranquility you know yeah. you don't have uh, anything on the table or yeah. the people yeah. you are you it's a little bit a uh, table in your house you yeah know? is uh, no, no not, <laughs> not my house anyway but this is where like monsieur macron would come if he was going to eat yeah it. yeah a lot of um lot of uh, Politic uh, personality, yeah. uh, VIP in the showbiz, yeah. uh, and they want to meet you as well. Is that normal? Like you get to meet them as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's it's it, for me. It's normal, you know. Uh, I uh, I present at the, uh, at the guest. Hello, I am Amory. I work for you tonight. If you have uh, anything allergy yeah. problem. Uh, you speak with me and with my team is uh, and and here is very nice because you have the window in the kitchen yeah. and once yeah. the window it's open a lot of people go in the window for see in the kitchen yeah, and, you can see everything and right uh, ask a lot of questions yeah but this so you close it so it's just like something comes here and you can't see no it, it's, it's a little bit uh, the same windows of the police uh, yeah. <laughs> like a tinted window <laughs> yeah. or like a limousine or like I was thinking, maybe yeah. like a police lineup. People yeah, yeah, see. of course. But okay, yeah. and um, it's crazy 
because uh, a lot of people think why well, don't see me mm -hmm. but in reality the, uh, the chef work I don't uh, think never think uh, of the guest yeah. or is because he's during the service he work a lot and yeah. yeah. Before we go into the kitchen and, uh, and, and chat a little while people are cooking, I would really love to hear um, some of the things that you're excited about on the menu at the moment. What, what, are, what are you proud of? What are you excited about that you're cooking? And Reggie love all. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, a lot of uh, guests uh, ask, uh, What what do you recommend the chef? Yeah, and it's difficult in reality because uh, the menu uh, it's all the plate. I love this. You know, I I think I don't can make a plate if I don't like a uh, sure. project. Sure, is is my vision. Uh, it's why it's it's difficult for me. Mm. After it depends if the if you are a girl or man. If you like a strong plate or lighty plate. Mm. Uh, because um, my kitchen is very incisive, mm -hmm. you know, a very uh, acid, hot, uh, spicy, uh, smoke, you know, yeah. uh, different plate with different flavor. Mm. Not a lot of ingredients. Mm. And very French, right? Did yeah. I read something? I, 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 all, the, all, all the plate is uh, 95% of French project because of the other Five percent is for the, for example, vinegar, olive oil, or Japanese product mm. is difficult to make yeah. in the restaurant, yeah. and I think it's better or different country. But my vision is better for help a lot of producer, fishman, yeah. lot of people work in France and for the ecology and the pollution. Not not very far, you know. Yeah. For the. Let me change the question slightly then. Because if you like all the food, it's very hard to get a recommendation from you. But I changed the question. If it's uh, your last night here, they, they're sending you back to Monaco. You can never be in Paris again tomorrow. And tonight's your last night. And you're going to sit here at the chef's table in this police room. Uh, and the chefs are going to cook for you one of your creations. What would be the perfect entree uh, plat in dessert? For you? For you. Uh, for me? It's your last night. Um, you have to tell me something. You can't say anything. For starter, I think uh, the sea brim in the, is a plate who is cooked in the ice plate. An ice plate? Yes. What does yes. that mean? I want to, to cook the fish uh, on the ice. But uh, after, uh, Guy Savoie, uh make a plate with the salmon on the ice is is not possible. I want to create a... Uh, other experience, other uh, other plate, and uh, I I make the fish, I make the the vegetables, the the sauce, and is, uh, after two minutes, I I have an evolution of the plate because uh, the plate is is uh, ice, and is um, you make a granity granity yes granity granity you What's know that? while this uh, liquid uh, changes the structure. You know, uh -huh. it's very it's very fresh with the fish is uh, and the sauce is little bit uh, ceviche, yeah, uh, leche de tigre. Yeah. yeah, I love this plate. I love this. That plate. sounds like an excellent entree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what what about for the main dish? <laughs> What's next? After I think uh, for this, I pass uh, at the lobster. Yeah, the lobster is very beautiful because uh, I make uh, is uh, fry. Um, My inspiration of the lobster is uh, is more important. I have a fresh lobster in lobster life because the texture is very beautiful. Is the cook at the moment is very very beautiful. After I make um, tempura, tempura of the chips uh, is it a bit uh, shrimp chips, you know, Chinese chips. It's a similar recipe on the top of the lobster. After fry, it's very crunchy. It's a sauce, lobster sauce, and the radish, uh, acid radish. It's wow. very be beautiful equilibrium yeah. under the, the garnish and the lobster. And for finish, I think uh, the veal. 
Veal. Yes, veal is very beautiful because I normally a lot of people uh, eat uh, fresh veal, very soft. And here the veal uh, stay maybe two, three weeks in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, it's very dry. After I make uh, marinade with a lot of uh, spicy in the cook in the Japanese barbecue, very slowly. Wow. It smoke a little bit. Very, very beautiful. Little bit the same flavor of the um, uh, ham. Yeah. It's very interesting. But th- is that a dessert? Dessert, yeah. That's, is that a veal for dessert? No, I don't make a dessert. I have the big chef, uh, Cedric Grolet, here. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, he yeah, makes a lot of uh, dessert for the restaurant. But um, I love all the dessert. For me, it's an uh, other uh, job. Mm. The pastry... Cook sure. is very very different yeah. at the at this level. Yes. Yeah. Right. That sounds very exciting. I think I would love to see you uh, in action. So I think <laughs> we're going to jump out there and see what happens. Yes, of course. But my last question before we do jump out there: When you made some of those meals, like the lobster, for the first time in front of Monsieur Alain Ducasse, how did he react? Um, Are you nervous? Like when you meet him and you're like, even though you've known the, him... The first time, yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. Because uh, it's my boss, you yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> I want to... You want to impress him, to, right? Yeah, impressive. To be the best... I want to be a, the best cook, you yeah. know. The, I want to work, work, work hard. And um, when I start, I think I want to make a lot in the plate. And the chef, they stop. Il faut retirer. Mm. You gotta, uh, you gotta bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. More, uh, uh, not more. Yeah. Uh, more. I see what you mean. So the the to make le- like not so extravagant, not so yeah. much. Yeah. 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 Not too much. Uh, concentrate of the flavor, temperature, yeah. the salt, the spicy. When you start, you want to. Uh, to want to show a lot of technique yeah. you want because you are young you want to but uh, it's not it's not the good idea at the end because I have a lot of flavor I don't understand what your vision sure you want it's a show for the show but at the end the guest I don't have a pleasure yeah but yeah. if you are the taste very simple but very technical is more interesting. So that's the challenge is to make it simple and technical uh, but in an impressive way that people don't even realize how much thinking has gone into it. <laughs> wow. The chef Alain Ducasse say all the time uh, simple, bon, efficace. Simple, good and efficient. Yeah. Do you... I've got one more question before we go there. It sounds to me you have an exceptional palate like you, your taste The is chef? You. Ah. Right? And the chef of course. Yeah. But do you ever go and eat it like just a really normal like creperie in Paris yes of you, course yeah? yeah of course I a lot of people think uh, the chef uh, eat uh, uh, fine dining all the time yeah. for me it's not the reality uh, I eat small uh, chicken uh, at the oven with my wife and yeah. my children yeah. uh, I I, I am normal yeah. in reality. I, I love the simple food, you know. Uh, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes I go to McDonald's. Uh, I was no, gonna, no, no. I was going to ask you that, but I thought. No, it no, no, be... no, no. No. <laughs> of course, of course. But even I like think, croissants uh, and stuff, are you so, like, I imagine that someone like you would go, oh no, I would never go there for a croissant. I have to go here because they're so much better. Or are you just. Oh, like, no, what? sometimes they depend. I have the same life for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> depend. Yes, of course. I, I want, uh, in general, eat uh, the, good, the good food, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, sometimes. Uh, I hit uh, fast food, mm. I hit... Uh... Good, we have, the, we have something in common then. I'm glad. <laughs> Let's go out to the, um, uh, the kitchen. We can take the microphones with us. Uh, and by the way, your English is great. I don't know what you were worried about. No, no. You have a no, lovely no. answer. <laughs> and like that, rather quickly, uh, up we got... I was quite excited. I was kind of nervous a little bit uh, to get into the bustling fray of the kitchen. There were, I don't know, there were maybe 15 or 20 chefs I could see all uh, sort of, it felt, you know, like I said, the meals, are, the, the, the dishes are small. It felt very, um, you know, like it wasn't like they were hacking up massive pieces of meat or bashing in lobsters or anything. It was very delicate, it seemed to me, what they were doing. And it was with a sort of uh, excited uh, you know, 
um, anticipation that we walked into this room and uh, continued the interview. Here we go. Amory, tell me, where are we going now? What is now, this? Now I go in the kitchen. Yep. And the gastronomic kitchen. Are they scared of you in here? Are they, are they, when you walk in, or look, does everybody look at you and go, oh, the chef is here? <laughs> a little bit? No, no, no it's, uh, it, uh, the kitchen, uh, all the chef is very young. Uh, I don't have, uh, uh, I have um, little bit the same age. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that. It looks yeah, like the oldest my, person here is like 30 I, uh, years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's us. Jimmy, Jimmy Tree is my adjoint. Yeah. Is my friends, my uh, my chef, my best chef Can here. Can we go and look at what he's doing? Yeah. What's he doing? Cheese? What's this? Oh wow! Oh, good idea. Cheese, cheese. 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 Yeah. Okay. And what are we? What, what's happening here? Uh, what's the idea? Because Dimitri uh, prepare uh, for the dinner all the cheese for the for the guests. Yep. And what have yeah. we got here? Rouelle. Tom de Savoie. Yep. So it's a uh, testing for tonight because uh, now is uh, autumn season yep. and uh, and function of, uh, of the season I change uh, the cheese. Yep. Depend of the season, depend of the milk because I have the summer milk, winter milk. Right. It's not the same flavor, same texture, and uh, it's uh, affinate. Right. It's the same for the wine yeah. and the cheese is the same. And so this is the cheese expert here. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. the boss, the boss of the cheese. Does he know more about cheese than you do? Is why why um He's smiling. The, the name the name is Dimitri, but yeah. the surname is uh, Bobby. Bobby. Bobby is an American boy. Are you American? No. <laughs> well the cheese looks delightful. What are the other cheeses that we have here? Can you tell me the names of the cheeses just so I what is it? Tom de Savoie, Chevrotin des Aravis, Roil Cendré, euh, Petit Fixin, euh, Livaro. Là-bas, ici, on a de euh, Sainte-Mort de Touraine, du Camembert, du Comté, Ordage, euh, du Moelleux du Révard. Et can I ask you a question, Jimmy Tree? Quick question. I don't speak English. Uh, It's the same of me. <laughs> It's a very easy question. No, very no. easy. Comté is the most popular for tourists and for people from different countries. Ça c'est le plus populaire. Yes, yes, yes. But is there est-ce qu'il y a un autre qui est plus bon que ça? Another one that's better than that that people should try. Hmm. For me and uh, for the chef, it's uh, this What? Cito. What's it called? Abbe. Cito. Abbe Abbe Cito. Abid Cito. Oui. And why is it so good? You it's, can answer in French if you want. Cr- um, It's a little bit similar of the Roblechon, but it's very, very lightly, very... It's the same f- flavor for Dimitri and me because I love this uh, um, cheese, very creamy, Okay. you know? And I speak with uh, people of the Jura, and the Jura, uh, where the, from the Comté, normally the, uh, the Comté... Yeah, Lo- love uh, the people where he from this cheese yeah. love when he wa- when he's young yeah. but for the uh, French people no yeah. Yeah. for the tourists or international guests sure you know he prefer uh, very old really? is that true so the yes, international people prefer old company yes, and yes. in Paris play? and in Paris it's the same why uh, this uh, uh, they are four years yeah four years yeah. old yeah. yeah it's very it's very old Yeah. That's normally in the Jura. Yeah. The people uh, eat uh, young, young, so uh, young cheese. Wow. It's different. It's why he create a little bit uh, salt crusto. Oh wow. This, because it's very old. Is uh, I have an evolution of the cheese. Yeah. Wow. Okay, fascinating. Okay, well, let's move on from the cheese. What else can we look at? What's some more food we can poke and touch? What's that stuff up there? Is that bacon? This? Yeah. No, no, it's a uh, leaf. Leave. It's a dry What? leaf for a plate with a, it's a leaf. Oh wow. It's just, a autumn leaf. What yeah. just off a tree? For the lobster, for the lobster. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Oh that's so beautiful. Because I love uh, work uh, simple ingredients yeah. but in different texture. Dry, yeah. acid. And, and so for the people at home, I'm just going to describe it although we have a photographer who's going to take pictures so you guys at home can see all this. But these leaves they they they're sort of golden red. They look like autumn leaves that have been crispy yeah. fried or how would No, no, no. Them? 
No, I want to. It's uh, just with uh, this. I make here with uh, lobster oil. Lobster and, oil. Yes, it's dry naturally. Yeah. No, I don't use a lit, uh, lot. Uh, um, a lot of quantity of oil because yeah. uh, I I want to make a lighty cook. Yeah. Okay. You know, little okay. bit just for for fry slowly. And where do you get those leaves from? Is yeah. it just like the Jardin de Tuileries? No, or? no, no. <laughs> uh, but not far. Yeah. Um, in the saint sany Parti Poétique. Uh -huh. It's a small garden and I work a lot with, uh, with her. Yeah. Um, it's an association uh, with a, he have a um, garden yeah. and he work with a benevol. Okay. Uh, it's an association with a uh, the objective is not for make money, yeah. just for help a lot of people, integration for the migrant, for example. Okay, wow, amazing. For learn the French. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Okay, he cool. make He makes the honey for the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Miel béton yeah, with yeah. the honey of the, in the city. Amazing. Yeah. And what have we got here? Figs. Figs, yes. This figs is a green figs. Uh, is not... Um, uh, at maturity mm -hmm. is when when is a figs uh, is a baby. Yep. Uh, I make a little bit of cornichon. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. uh, like pickles. Pickles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very. You can taste. Huh? Can I taste? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't want to take, take, take. Oh wow! Pickled, I've, pickled fig. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. nice. Yes. Yeah. I is a plate with uh, nuts, uh, bled and figs. And I work in different uh, textures of fig, mm. and uh, is a change a lot with uh, the flavor with the milk of the uh, of the turbot. Wow! When you serve it to people, what do you put on the plate with it? I make uh, a plate, little bit uh, structure uh, with different elements for the when you have in the la bouche, dans la bouche, in the mouth, yeah, in the mouth. Uh, you have a lot of flavor. That was it's like why, an explosion yeah, of flavor. It's why it's uh, small, because yeah. when you put the spoon in your yeah. mouth, yeah. you have a lot of flavor, yeah. and, uh, but it's the same product. What else is, what's, what's exciting? <laughs> oh, uh, this guy prepares uh, oyster for tonight. Uh -huh. He's the uh, first uh, hors d'oeuvre. After the, you are, when you are uh, in the restaurant, you have uh, amuse bouche, yep. and after you have uh, oyster. Yep. Uh, is uh, very very beautiful, and I work this. Uh, I work the oyster all the year. Yep. All the year I work oyster because I love, I love this project and this uh, oyster. So it's oyster and there's little slices oyster, of grape on top of yeah, it. Yeah. After you have. Um, Okay, so so so. Yeah, for, they saw is this for me? Yes, yes. Okay, so we've got uh, granita. It's called uh, granita in English, apparently. of the grapefruit and mm. gin tonic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Wow. It's for it's for before to start the start the yeah, yeah. starter. It's clean your mouth you ah, know so a gra Grave. granita with uh, with these flavors and is that what was on top of the oyster yeah the same one that we just had with yeah, 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 oh yeah, my yeah, gosh yeah. okay it's this oyster grape and uh, granite and it's served uh, what we're looking at your colleague here is putting them on little wooden spoons inside the oyster shell it's very beautiful and then what do you put like six on a plate for somebody or two or? no 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 just just one oh, wow. and one bite yeah. for clean the mouth oh, I love it after love you it. start Okay, final stop, uh, Monsieur Head Chef. Where where should we stop? What's the last thing we should look at? Uh, I can stop uh, in the starter station. Okay. He make um, before the service. He prepare all the the fruit for the vegetable because I have a lot of people now want to eat uh, vegetable. Yes. With fruit is uh, and for me it's more important to adapt my kitchen yep. of the different people. Uh, uh, if you have uh, intolerance, uh, pro alimentary problem, and uh, I'm, I prepare a lot of uh, recipes right. with uh, not better, not milk, yeah. not uh, grease, yeah. animal grease, uh, not uh, protein animal. Yeah, and that's what this uh, this man is doing now: is cutting up crumbs. 
quitch, 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 quitch is a prune. Oh, okay. Yes, is a. It feels like this is a language lesson today as well. I'm learning, <laughs> I'm learning so much. Okay. It's a it's a prune if you can turn the onion. Okay, thank you very much. We taste. Yeah. Is a. Um, oh yes, quitch. Where quitch? Yeah. And I I work in different uh, texture. Here is a marina uh, marinade. Yep, yep. Here is a uh, dry yep. after rehydrated. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. because I want to make different uh, flavor of the same ingredients. Okay. And here is a uh, juice. Here is a condiment. So this is all made for this? all. Okay. All all these products. Okay. The five you the five yes, products okay. is is make with the same this, product. I this guess? is yeah 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 yeah. It's a juice. Is that a good amount? Okay. Well, that's delicious, isn't it? What I work for is? this. I work for <laughs> this. this. Is your job. And this guy, <laughs> delicious. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. And so, how do you serve that then? The juice, or is it all? Do you mix it together to do some? Kind it's, of... it's for all. Is for make a plate. Right. And uh, you, uh, when I create a plate, I don't have a lot of flavor. I have a lot of flavor, but is at the end is the same product. You know. Simple, bon, et efficace. Et efficace. Oui, voilà. ça. Okay. Well, we we can finish on that note. I think I will let you get back to work. Thank you very much. You're welcome uh, for spending time with me and uh, for everybody out there in listener land. Uh, if you come to the restaurant, uh, is it a good idea that people ask to say hello to you? Do you yes, want, of do you course. Want people to? Uh, with pleasure. I love sure? I love uh, speak with uh, with the guests with uh, with the people. I'm sorry for my English. No, your English is but, fine. Uh, I work for this. I work for this. It's okay, my well. uh, priority. <laughs> well, uh, now a lot of people from around the world will have heard your English. They know you speak great English and they're going to come and talk to you. So be prepared uh, for, some, for some listeners to say hello. Uh, and everyone, uh, you're in for a treat when you come uh, and eat here. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, as I said, that is the restaurant Alain Ducasse. You can check it out at Le Maurice on Rue de Rivoli, a legendary hotel. And it sounds like a very wonderful restaurant. I hope to eat there one day, maybe on the next very special occasion. I hope you guys go check it out. Let me know if you do. Uh, but enough about food for a moment. I want to say this episode was brought to us. No sponsors on this show, guys. This show was brought to us by the lovely Patreon supporters. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash The Earful Tower. These guys who pay a monthly or an annual membership fee are the reason that it's been going for five years very simply. You listen to those other podcasts, they talk about mattresses, they talk about razor blades, all that boring stuff. Sometimes they start with like 10 minutes of ads. Uh, this is it. That's all I'm going to say. Patreon.com slash The Earful Tower. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for the Patreon members via an email I got. You know, I started off by saying the show's been around for five years. One of the uh, sort of longest serving, can you say serving? That sounds wrong. One of the listeners who's been here for the longest is Crin in Sydney. And uh, she responded to my weekly email this week which has like 6,000 subscribers now. If you're not on it, get on it. TheIffTower.com slash newsletter. And she says, Hi there, congratulations on all the milestones you're hitting. So fabulous. She continues, This isn't a podcast suggestion. It's a walking suggestion. She's referring to the walk shows that I used to do a lot of, but I haven't done for a little while since the baby came along, but I'm about to get back into. She says, um, I got a suggestion for a walk show. No guests, just you walking a street. I'm feeling nostalgic for the old Eiffel Tower days with fumbles, breakdowns, and you discovering Paris. What she's referring to, I do believe there have been times when Krin was the only viewer on uh, on one of the walk shows. What she's referring to, if you're new around here, is uh, often uh, for the Patreon members, sometimes for the public, I do a walk with a stabilized camera live where I'm answering everybody's comments and showing Paris. As the show has grown, I've got bigger and better guests. We do it very professionally compared to those early days. And in the early days, it was uh, pretty chaotic, really. I didn't know what I was... I was kind of inventing it as I went along. And it sounds to me like Corinne is nostalgic for those days. So here's what I propose. Early December, date to be confirmed, I'll do a solo walk uh, under the Christmas lights somewhere beautiful in Paris, but only for Patreon members. It'll be on a private YouTube link. You can only get it if you're a member. Patreon.com slash The Earful Tower. She continues with the email, Corinne. She says, it looks like you'll have to do a Sydney get-together... Make it small and simple, then you only have to fly up overnight. What's she referring to? Why, of course, 
She's referring to the Eiffel Tower soiree that I will be doing in Melbourne, Australia, December 16th. That's the plan. I'm very aware that that might not eventuate uh, considering what's going on in the world. But I'm going to be going home for Christmas, home to Australia for the first time in five years. That is insane. That is insane. So I'm going to go back, see the family, hopefully see them all. I hope so. And uh, introduce them to our son, Otis. So I figured because uh, it's such a big trip and you've got jet lag and all that, I'll be staying there for a couple of weeks. And I figure it would be wrong to not do an event uh, somewhere in there for Earful Tower listeners. So when I put that on social media, I'd say maybe 50 or 60 people in Melbourne said they were up for the event. I can only assume that means more would show up. That's very exciting. I could be convinced to do uh, Sydney, maybe. You'll have to keep those emails coming. Uh, But let's see where we go with it. That is a conversation, I think, for December And we're still in November. So that'll do for me today. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, uh, do me a favor and text a friend about it. Here's what I say. Text a friend and just write write this or Facebook message or whatever. Just write this. Earful Tower? Question mark. See what happens. See what happens. Maybe take a screenshot. uh, (laughs) Let me know what happens. If they uh, ask you, tell them to listen to the show. If they respond, yeah, it's my favorite podcast, then we're onto something and something must be going right. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this show. Uh, I'm looking forward to celebrating these milestones that I obviously couldn't have done without you. Have a lovely week wherever you are. I'll be back next Monday, as I have for five years, with a fresh new episode, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Merci beaucoup, bon appétit, and au revoir.